Chapter 356, Anthony Materialized Lu Xu did not take it to heart the time frame of the materialization of the spirit Anthony, since Lu Xiaoyu had estimated it to be one month, it was so long ago that Lu Xu had almost forgotten about it. However, the truth was Anthony had materialized as early as eight days before, ten days ahead of the projected time, because Lu Xiaoyu had also unlocked her third nebula. But Lu Xu was totally unaware of this, as the sulking Lu Xiaoyu did not even reply to his messages in the past few days. At that moment, the second black hole had emerged out of the second nebula on Lu Xiaoyu's map, meaning she was now fully capable of materializing two spirits. Also in her second nebula rested a pig Xiaoyu captured from the butchery last time. Her first pig was spoiled by Lu Xu before she even had enough of it. Lu Xu gazed at the Anthony conjured up right before him, still a black spirit with the outlines vaguely contoured in Anthony's appearance. It brought Lu Xu an immense sense of pressure by simply standing there quietly. It was the unharmed class B Anthony. Lu Xu was certain that he was no match for Anthony had the latter not been severely injured by Chen Bailey. If he had not been injured, it was possible that he could easily entrap his corpse dog and concealed arrow with ordinary mud. Currently, bracelets concentrated with deep sea white sand were hanging tightly on Anthony's wrists. Of course, a spirit did not have to care about its injuries, and all it needed to do was transform all the deep sea white sand into his attack. Lu Xu was studying it with all seriousness. After Lu Xiaoyu carried the empty bowls to the kitchen, Lu Xu decisively fished out the only ambulite soul pearl left on his map and slid it into Anthony's mouth. The spirit itself had no consciousness. When the soul pearl was near, it opened its mouth to swallow the pearl. The soul pearl had been with Lu Xu all this time since he sacrificed the eight spies for power enhancement last time. But Lu Xiaoyu insisted that the spirit would surely laugh foolishly after eating the pearl, hence she never allowed him to feed it to the spirits. Lu Xu was unconvinced. Apparently nothing produced by the celestial map was useless. Then, he could only watch helplessly as Anthony suddenly started giggling. Lu Xu. You are dead. Lu Xiaoyu got heated the second she saw Anthony laughing like a silly person. It shouldn't be like this. Now with Concealed Arrow, shouldn't he be angry? Lu Xu was struggling to explain as Lu Xiaoyu hung on him trying to hit him. Then he suddenly realized, right, he killed the spy with Corpse Dog back then. Corpse Dog was in charge of happiness, then of course it would giggle. But, what would happen if a spirit swallowed all seven soul pearls responsible for happiness, anger, sorrow, fear, love? hatred and desire. Would it be reborn? Then he pondered again, the next time he met a spirit, he must kill it with concealed arrow to obtain its soul pearl, and see what would happen when Anthony swallowed that one. But, it was a big question whether Lu Xiaoyu would allow it. Something's not right. Has its power improved? Or is there any additional stuff like skills? Lu Xu was confused. The last time when he fed the spirit a pearl, the class D beginner was suddenly leveled up to mid-class D. Lu Xiaoyu replied coldly, slight improvement. But it's too insignificant compared to its existing power. That made sense now. Although it was a class C soul pearl, its energy was negligible to the potent class B Anthony. Lu Xiaoyu continued, actually there are some additional unusual pieces of a body tricks in its fighting nature but they are incomplete and seem rather useless. Lu Xu suddenly saw the light that some abilities and experience could be transferred down through the pearl. But usually Anthony only relied on his supernatural powers, which rendered body tricks futile. Lu Xu did not regret it anyway, as Anthony itself was already his greatest gain. More time and practice was needed with regard to the soul pearls. He checked his digital memorandum, what's your biggest control range? 100 kilometers, Lu Xiaoyu replied. Lu Xu was shocked by the vast improvement. It was only 5 kilometer last time. He didn't know that unlocking another nebula would bring about such a giant jump in power. Examining his map, 
To Lu Xu's surprise, Lu Xiaoyu could really reach Manchi County if she was stationed in Luo Chang. Lu Xu babbled on, you can let Anthony travel there via the earth. I've sent you its location via GPS. So you'll only need to steal things like cash, magical stones, and their stock. It would be better to not be seen. Techniques like transport via soils were just awesome, perfectly out of sight of any surveillance. Moreover, given Anthony's outstanding Class B abilities, robbing a black market would certainly be a piece of cake. Other people would be laughing their head off with a Class B spirit in their hands. But Lu Xu had other plans, and his attention was subconsciously drawn to the black market, it'd be better to take action at night. After all, it's black from its head to toe, easy to hide. If it really encounters any resistance from the market side, just kill whoever is in its way. I have seen their information and everyone has blood on their hands. However, after a long talk, Lu Xiaoyu shot Lu Xu a frosty stare, you hid my TV box and turned my spirit into an idiot, yet now you are asking me to help you rob? With a flash of wit, Lu Xu quickly replied, how is it helping me rob? What's mine is also yours, isn't it? Only until then, Lu Xiaoyu's knitted brows relaxed, is that true? Absolutely. Still, I won't ever forget your crime of hiding my TV box. Lu Xu was speechless. Manchi was 74 kilometers away from Luo Chang. Lu Xu might still have enough time as the group of geniuses should have just arrived. The thought of those fierce-looking bandits in the black market legitimized Lu Xu's plan to steal all their weapons away with Anthony. In that way, the genius's safety would be secured. He was such a nice person with a great heart for the community. Maybe the Heavenly Network should present him with a silk banner. It did not matter what they wrote on it, bring people back to life would do too. Lu Xiaoyu unwrapped her new phone with joy in her heart when Lu Xu suddenly said, Can you give me your old phone? That time when they were buying second-hand phones, Lu Xu got Lu Xiaoyu a better one than his own. Take it. The password is my birthday, when Lu Xiaoyu was sent to the orphanage, her name and birthday were written on a slip of paper tucked in her swaddling clothes. Lu Xu immediately put down her phone as if nothing had happened, I can wait until I come back. Lu Xiaoyu raised her brow, you forgot my birthday? <laughs> How's that possible? Lu Xu laughed politely, trying to hide his embarrassment. You are a dead duck. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 999. I didn't forget. Really, Lu Xu tried his luck at keying in the password? <laughs> See? It's correct. False alarm. Just now he really could not recall it. He did not even remember his own birthday. To him, there was no point in celebrating a birthday for orphans like them. They said the day of birth was also the day of torture for one's mother, which made it necessary to remember it by heart. But, she had abandoned them like an unwanted burden. If so, what was the purpose of birthdays? Lu Xu would rather erase them all from his memory. When Lu Xu was back out again rushing to Tongguan, Anthony plunged into the earth straight from their house, hurrying to Mianchi. Chapter 357 What Are You Looking For? It took about one hour by train ride to get to Mianchi from Luochang via Lianhua Railway, but under the earth Anthony was much faster than cars. The entire underground was his designated path, smooth without any red lights. Anthony only needed around 20 minutes to cover the distance of an one-hour car ride. But Lu Xiaoyu did not instruct him to steal anything at first. After successfully locating the black market, Anthony lurked deep underground, awaiting further orders. She was following Lu Xu's words, which had only two lines. Do nothing except stealing, and only take action at night. Hence, Lu Xiaoyu had to wait until nightfall. The Mianchi black market was a refuse treatment plant. Despite its smell, it was rather favored by its customers due to its concealed position. But outsiders rarely went deep inside, as the interior had been redesigned into a maze with underground tunnels. The plant gradually quietened down after the onset of night, and only a dozen people were still playing cards in the innermost factory room, the most secret corner. 
Under usual conditions, no unauthorized personnel were allowed to enter there, except introduced black market customers. Of course, the private place also made it easier to deal with their victims. In the beginning, the establishment of the black market was by pure coincidence as the young director of the refuse treatment plant had awakened to his power. With prior experience in usury and over 20 fellows working for him, the director decided to let go of his past wrongdoings and started operating the plant. To tell the truth, this bunch of people were generally blessed with good aptitudes, and out of the 20, two were actually awakened. At that time, the director got a wicked idea. With capital in his pocket, coupled with market demand for magical stones, they wanted to buy some stones and resell them at higher figures. There was indeed a seller on the Golden Foundation. However, their meeting at the treatment plant ended in a disagreement over the price, and the seller was killed during the conflict. Therefore, the two magical stones fell into their hands and were sold at 130,000 yuan each. The ease of making so much money aroused the director's interest. Human greed was limitless. After the first time, it became hard to stop. Moreover, their minds were already distorted by their past experience in usury. Compelled by immense profits, they started their black-hearted business. They would not kill all their customers anyway, so as to sustain their operation of the black market. But in the case of fat cats, they would not stop until they robbed them all. In fact, it was unlikely for them to make a huge fortune in this half a year, but they had made at least 3 to 4 million yuan. Moreover, the environment controlled by the Heavenly Network was definitely not favorable for them. The prophets, however, were like a magnet to other metahumans in the gray areas, coming to work for the director as his fighters. After dinner time, they started playing mahjong, with empty beer bottles rolling on the floor. Now, all of them had some money to spare, hence they were more generous with their bets. It was because the director did not keep most of the profits to himself, which meant his followers had reaped some sort of harvest as well. For them, money came too easily, so it flowed out of their pockets equally easily too. As the saying goes, if money is not earned lawfully, it eventually goes back to the public. But the third industry in the region indeed flourished thanks to them. Now, women in the service sectors love to accept their business. One person lit up his cigarette as he was playing mahjong, I heard that something's up in Gongi. Do you know? Yeah, all of them got killed and everything is gone. We'll be safe, won't we? What can happen to us? Who can find such a covert hiding place? In the past, only those brought in by three introducers were allowed to come in here. But they are different. They let their guard down. No black market can operate like that. The young director sneered, it's called karma. I heard they even carried off girls from the streets. Good for nothings. What about us? We make money secretly. Those things won't find us. Also, we have so many brothers, who are we afraid of if it's not the heavenly network? Wanna try their luck? Ask my sword first. His pride came from his weapon, a standard sword of the heavenly network that he got by chance. At first, he was not bold enough to accept it, but the sheer power of the sword made it hard to resist. His ego seemed bigger with that sword by his side. Hearing the director's words, everyone burst into laughter, continue with the mahjong. I've got a date with Xiaolu later. You can die alongside women. <laughs> what do you understand? It's called free love. The laugh grew louder. At that moment, a black shadow rose above the floor besides them, giggling. Bloody hell, it was creepy. Although over half of them were metahumans, and even those who were not had already gotten used to strange happenings, it was such an eerie sight to see a silhouette coming out from the ground. Trembling, they motioned everyone to look at it, and all sound drained from the place. But the black shadow only shot them a glance and started searching the well-lit room as though no one was around. Did it not see us, someone muttered. Such arrogance, everyone was in shock. There were so many people sitting here, do you not see us or do you think we cannot see you? 
You have made yourself comfortable, haven't you? Of course, Lu Xiaoyu could see them through Anthony. But Lu Xu had only instructed her to wait until nightfall and steal. Nothing else. The director could not help but ask, Hey, bro. What are you looking for? Do you need a hand? Anthony suddenly turned to them, his deep sea white sand bracelets decomposed into a hovering line of words besides his hands. Where are your magical stones and weapons? The words were a bit small, but the director's guts were not. He knew well that it might be an Earth-type metahuman, but judging from their utter numerical superiority and the inherent weakness of the element Earth, they were clearly more advantaged. Upon a closer look, the man found it irritatingly hilarious. Then, studying Anthony more carefully, he was stunned again, what are you giggling for? Did you get some bullshit? Giggling? Lu Xiaoyu was still in a fit of anger and the word successfully provoked her again. How would it have happened had it not been Lu Xu? In the next instant, the cement floor of the room suddenly softened into gray sandy soil and, like countless palms, it grabbed at all of their ankles. Chapter 358 What are you laughing wildly for? Unable to vent her anger after Lu Xu left, Lu Xiaoyu's temper was ignited again by the word giggling. Indignant. Very indignant. At first, the director's courage was boosted by the numerical superiority of his team. It was normal for an Earth-type metahuman to be able to transport through soil, and their chances of victory seemed obvious despite their rival's rare ability of transforming into a black fog. After all, they had more people, which meant more power. The director himself had encountered quite a number of metahumans. Although most of those outside the heavenly network might not be weaker than him, very few were actually stronger. Thus, he had developed a sense of pragmatism, they would be fine unless the heavenly network were there and if they really came, it would be an inescapable siege anyway. Else, why would they call themselves the heavenly network, such an awe-inspiring name? However, as the saying goes, you'll never know how good you are till you try. Now, their feet were tightly tied to the floor by the layer of fine sand, and their struggle was rendered futile by the strong grip. Apparently, their enemy was at least a class C. But the question was, you as a class C still came to steal our magical stones and weapons? Are you shameless? The director immediately signaled to his men on the sly, take out the gun under the mahjong table. One bullet would surely blow up the shadow's face, while the rest would waste no time subduing him. Until then, they did not dare to think that they were facing a Class B, it was not due to their lack of imagination though. Class Bs were as rare as national treasures these days. Who would expect a Class B master to go on a magical stone's hunt? It simply did not make any sense. As soon as the gun was taken out, a blanket of sand suddenly swept the person off his feet, throwing him on the iron door with a loud bang. Instantly, both the gun and the door fell apart, with the man lying in anguish on the floor. Lu Xiaoyu's anger peaked at the sudden drama. She rearranged the deep sea white sand into another line of words. I want all of you to laugh. The atmosphere was spooky. A shadowy expert who could not stop giggling for no reason was asking you to laugh together with him. Recognizing the enemy's overwhelming power, the wise director immediately cooperated. <laughs> Other people's reaction was not as fast, but laughing foolishly alone was embarrassing too. <laughs> All of you, you jolly well laugh. <laughs> Everyone present quickly started giggling until their cheeks went sore, but it seemed the shadow had no intention to let them stop. Only then was Lu Xiaoyu slightly placated and she began controlling Anthony to search the entire factory room. It was easy to find magical weapons. There was one just by the director's side, a standard sword. Anthony reached out his hand, but the director protectively shielded the sword with his arms. <laughs> Please don't take this. Give me a way to live. <laughs> it was meaningless though. What should be taken would be taken. After a while, Anthony still could not find any cash or valuables. In the end, he discovered a big safety box under an oilcloth in the corner. To unlock it, 
Anthony did not even need keys or passwords. Instead, he concentrated sand into sharp saws, cutting the hinges open, revealing the cache and eleven magical stones inside. The director was on the verge of breakdown. That was all of his savings. Their power was clearly below his, and the one who got hit earlier was still vomiting blood on the floor. Honestly speaking, they began to wonder if he was a Class B. But Class B? Was he driven crazy by his poverty? The director was tearing up due to the pain in his chest and his aching feet. The sandy palms were grabbing onto them too tightly. Having stuffed everything in the sack, Anthony turned, with a line formed in front of him, laugh for thirty minutes. I'll be watching you. He sunk into the floor after he finished his sentence, and the grip on their feet loosened too. But the director had stopped laughing once he was gone. Instantly, Anthony reappeared, staring into his eyes, giggling. A grain of deep sea-white sand immediately dug a hole through the director's foot. The director almost fainted in shock. He was a strength-type metahuman. How could a grain of sand penetrate his foot so easily? Suppressing his pain, he asked. <laughs> do you really have to do this? What's the point? I'm teaching you to grow up, the words were rearranged, do you know what maturity is? The director made a guess, maturity seems rather cruel. It symbolizes the fading of youth and the decolorization of dreams. Maturity is to learn to laugh when you tear up. The director? It was smiling when you tear up. Not giggling. Just like that, Anthony re-emerged again and again, until the director was almost desperate. Are you so free? Do you want to play mahjong together? In the end, none of them was certain whether the shadow was really gone. At that moment, the group of geniuses responsible for taking care of the place were approaching the refuse treatment plant under the disguise of the night. They had done a thorough investigation during the day. Actually, besides seven to eight metahumans of varying abilities, there were ordinary people as well. Thus, with their class D power and a standard sword each, they had no reason to lose the fight. Be careful of their guns. The information shows that they have them. Let's break through in the shortest time possible. Try to subdue the Class D factory director first. Kill anyone with guns. We'll cover one another. The seven sneaked in gingerly. Before they were near, someone asked, I heard them playing Mahjong last night. Why are they not playing today? Did something happen? Quickly, let's go, the leader accelerated his pace. As soon as they got over the garbage pile, they saw the door swung wide open. One person accidentally kicked a ring pull can, and the noise alerted those inside the door. In the next second, everyone saw those inside were laughing wildly at them through the open door. What the hell? Ambush, the geniuses were white with terror. But the director immediately figured out what was going on from their standard swords. The Heavenly Network when thieves meet the police, it was in their subconsciousness to run. Before the geniuses could come up with a plan, the director ran away with his men following behind, laughing wildly. The shadow was way scarier than those geniuses. Who the hell knew whether he was still around? What? What are they laughing for, they were still yet to recover from being startled. Are we pursuing? Could there be ambush? A strategy? Laughing so wildly so that we don't dare to chase? Because they knew they couldn't win against us. The geniuses were pondering what kind of emotions were infused in that wild laughter. We don't have time. We can't let them escape. Chase them. The geniuses followed them, and the director's laughter came from the front. <laughs> Split up. <laughs> the geniuses were slightly annoyed. Lunatics. Chapter 359, A Class A's Victory. Lu Xu went to Tongguan by train. As Anthony was on the move, Lu Xu himself would be happy to plead ignorance of the Mianqi incident. He had thought over the matter for a long time. Actually, it would not be such a big deal even if his doings at Gongyi were exposed. 
Killings were permitted by Shi Xuejin, and in the worst-case scenario, his spoils might be confiscated by Nye Ting. After all, he had no money but one life. Aware that Nye Ting was paying special attention to him, Lu Xu was certain that Nye Ting had noticed his action. If Nye Ting was resolved to track him down, he could not deny that he had left his team at Gongyi without the other members' approval. But it did not matter. In principle, he did not commit any mistakes. As a last resort, he could confess to his possession of the head-twisting gourd. Anyway, Li Dian was imprisoned in the special cell of the Heavenly Network, and he could provide evidence. Moreover, Li Dian was unaware that he was the old tree spirit. It would not do him any harm to admit the matter on buying the gourd. The reason for such a plan was that he knew how Chi Chao had got something from the black market, but the Heavenly Network never took any action against him. It seemed that the network would not take away their people's personal belongings, including stuff from the black market. Speaking of which, Lu Xu indeed had a bitter feud with Hao Chi Chao. However, during the training, Hao Chi Chao turned out to be the one who admired Lu Xu the most. After a few rounds of interaction, they slowly became friends. Lu Xu had realized it too, that most people in the Heavenly Network were frank and straightforward. Any conflicts could be resolved by a fight. Afterwards, Hao Ji Chao still invited Lu Xu and the little fatty for a beer. For Lu Xu, another takeaway from his progress report in the capital was the bunch of friends like Hao Ji Chao. Honestly, it was a strange feeling to have comrades in arms. Now, Lu Xu had pushed Anthony out under the daylight. His and Lu Xiaoyu's cultivation techniques could not be exposed. Actually, it felt conflicting. Since they had to keep their power in secret, they would rather use it legitimately while pleading ignorance and then trick others into thinking that Anthony was an independent expert, acting on his own. At present, he was in Tongguan while Lu Xiaoyu was in Luo Cheng, so who would relate them to a pro master that far away? Both of them had more than enough evidence to support their alibis. As a matter of fact, Lu Xiaoyu's ability to capture one spirit was a major taboo. Locally, many believed in rebirth while overseas, people put their faith in the eternal paradise. However, how could one be reborn when his spirit was caught? This meant every life would perish after death, and an afterlife was a mere illusion. For many, it was terrifying. The death itself could elicit fear, so how would it feel like to be controlled after one's death? People would not entertain the idea, and some might even call it evil. Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu themselves knew very well that they would never capture a good man's spirit. But would others believe them? Thus, the secret could not be uncovered. From then on, anything that was inappropriate for them to do by themselves would be handled by the ghosts. Lu Xiaoyu was still the animal whisperer that she used to be, and it was good enough. Like now, Nye Ting might not care about Lu Xu's action of stealing other people's jobs, but he surely would if Lu Xu robbed. On the train, Lu Xu was scrolling through the Golden Foundation forum when he came across a post. Newly ascended Class A Sword Master Li Xianyi exterminated a 17-people organization that trafficked in practitioners, killing a Class B rival in the process. As it was said, one majestic fight could inspire awe throughout the world. The only witnesses of Nye Ting's confrontation with the Class B water-type expert were the Heavenly Network and Daoyuan class students, none of whom would post it on the forum. Thus, the old man's first fight became the world's first that involved a Class A, which would go down in the history of the cultivation realm. As a matter of fact, the so-called organization that trafficked in practitioners were not trading any practitioner the closest of whom were teenagers with a cultivation aptitude, a favorite for many external associations. Thus, they were sold overseas as goods, brainwashed and trained into soldiers for war. To Li Xiani, it was an intolerable act that would undermine the foundation of human cultivation. When Lu Xu reached Tongguan, Chen Zuan, together with everyone else, was playing cards at an inn. The inn, which cost 30 yuan per night, was indeed of low quality, without even a separate toilet. According to Cheng Chiao, it was to avoid unnecessary attention. 
but Lu Xu thought otherwise, if a group of decent-looking students stayed in such a shabby place, how would others not notice them? After further questioning, he came to know that Cheng Chiuqiao was a poor child. Most of his salaries were confiscated by his parents to prevent him from overspending and left him only 200 yuan, as his pocket money each month. Chen Zuan almost laughed his head off, no wonder you don't have a girlfriend. You don't even have the tool to hunt in a zoo. Lu Xu shot him a glance, and Chen Zuan self-consciously continued, while I do have the tool, where's my girlfriend? Very well, Lu Xu nodded. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 667. Chen Zuan actually listened to Lu Xu. When Lu Xu told him to wait for his return, he really waited, regardless of other people's opinions. In any case, he was determined to follow Lu Xu. Despite other people's title as the class aptitude geniuses, currently they were class D at most. But the information had shown that those in the black market were all cruel and merciless. In Lu Xu's absence, Chen Zuan would never risk his life at those kind of places. When Chao Qingxi went to investigate alone, the clever Zuan initiated playing cards with everyone else. After some consideration, Lu Xu decided to make plans after Chao Qingxi's return. He wondered too, why he had so much trust in her, as though he never had to worry that she would screw anything up. With the poor student at Chang Chiu Chiao present, they could not bet money during the card game. After one day of cards, the genius immediately offered his seat to Lu Xu. One could not deny Chen Zuan's awesome card skills, which made the genius so dispirited after one whole day of losing. Since Lu Xiaoyu was absent, Chen Zuan was resolved to take revenge on Lu Xu. In spite of his good academic performance, Lu Xu was inexperienced at cards. Hence, he lost over ten sets in a row. Succeeded at his revenge, Chen Zuan let out a presumptuous laugh, I am the little gamble lord of the capital. No joke. Lu Xu cast him a frosty glimpse and went to the toilet. I, Lu Xu, am never weaker than anybody in my entire life. But he had to admit that he could not defeat Chen Zuan at cards by himself. Next time, he still needed Lu Xiaoyu. When Lu Xu was in the toilet, Chen Zuan and the rest followed him there as well. Until then, he was still bragging about his card skills. They stood in a row in the public toilet. The more Chen Zuan bragged, the more unhappy Lu Xu became. At that moment, something strange happened. Although Chen Zuan did have the desire to pee, it was not coming out. Lu Xu found out that his water-type power could control urine. As for blood, he might test it next time. When Cheng Chiuqiao was almost done, Chen Zuan had not even started. Careful not to offend him, Cheng Chiuqiao asked, Slow urination? Do you have kidney deficiency, Brother Zuan? Bullshit. Will I get kidney deficiency? My kidneys are good. Chen Zuan grumbled. Then, it came out and Chen Zuan breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. A man can have deficiencies anywhere but not the kidneys. Unconsciously, Cheng Chiuqiao shot him another glance, and exclaimed in surprise, Brother Zuan, yours has split into five branches. You don't have kidney deficiency, because you don't have kidneys at all? Instantly, it further split into six branches. Cheerfully, Lu Xu gave a pat on Chen Zuan's shoulder, don't call yourself the little gamble lord of the capital. Change it to the little shower head of the capital. See? You can use it as your shower head. Whatever fluid he looked at, it split. Wasn't it scary? Chen Zuan was dumbfounded. How could he have a kidney deficiency without ever having a girlfriend? Chapter 360 Eccentricity Men are proud creatures. Some people would not mind losing anything else, but not their face. A typical example was Chen Zuan. As a youthful young man like he was, how could he bear the name of someone with no kidneys? It was a huge insult to Chen Zuan, who was constantly boasting of his flirting skills. Thus, he was determined to save his reputation. But the thing was, his had never split before. Chen Zuan was certain that it was a mere accident. 
After returning to their room, Chen Zuan put down his cards and kept drinking water. Soon, he had the desire to pee again. Having rushed to the toilet, he realized that there were no more branches at all. Chen Zuan was ecstatic and forced his remaining urine back. He ran back to the room, stop playing and follow me. I have said that mine will not split, and now it's time to prove it. Screw that shower head. I'm still the little gamble lord of the capital. Lu Xu raised his eyebrows, sure. Let's go and have a look. In the toilet, Chen Zuan took off his pants, have a good look. Cheng Chiuqia was stunned, Brother Zuan, are we here to witness the birth of a new Guinness World Record? Ten branches? A brand new height. Chen Zuan was shocked too, and the ten branches were changing positions and speeds like a fancy fountain. A walking fountain? It would be just perfect with a background music like Happy Birthday. What the hell? Thanks to Chen Zuan's vigorous efforts, his nickname had upgraded from Chen the Five Branches to Chen the Ten Branches. Damn it. From Chen Zuan's distress, plus 999. Although Chen Zuan thought it was his own issue, Lu Xu had realized it since long ago that he would get distress points as long as he himself was the cause of the negative emotions. It had never occurred to Chen Zuan that someone would use his magical abilities to do that. Lu Xu wondered what would be on Chen Zuan's mind, if one day he finally found out about Lu Xu's water-type power and linked it to this day. In the recent two days, Lu Xu had made a fortune in distress points. Despite the significant contributions from the little fatty, it was not even close to that from the factory director and others. Currently, he was already halfway towards igniting the third star. Chao Qingxi had finally come back late at night. When everyone was waiting for the information she gathered, she sat alone on her chair, deep in thought, without muttering a single word. Lu Xu was curious, how? What did you find? The group was operating in an agricultural wholesale market as their hiding place. In fact, their business was flourishing and they could make a sum solely by collecting rental fees from stall owners. But they wanted more. Now, their power was quickly building up through unscrupulous means. Unlike other black markets, the information showed that this one only took in things, but never sold any. It was very strange. No matter how rich their market was, it was not possible for them to use everything they took. Could it be they were hatching a conspiracy? But how would they put their evil plan into place, with a heavenly network on top which comprised seven heavenly kings? including two Class A masters. The local climate was against them, as though newbies were directly thrown into top-level game settings. If it were a game, players would certainly launch complaints against the customer service center, but this was not. In fact, the customer service was their most challenging boss character. Chao Qingxi cast Lu Xu a peaceful glimpse, very concealed. Didn't find anything. A reticent girl, Lu Xu thought, I was actually hoping you would tell us more. But Chao Qingxi's words reminded Lu Xu that those markets he visited before were both easy to find with lousy hiding methods. At the very least, it was obvious that those in the abandoned car factory were not well-intentioned individuals. It was a different case here. They were smarter and blended their trading in an agricultural market so that one could hardly distinguish the foes from the innocent. Earlier on Lu Xu had already noticed the strangeness in their mission. It was not due to the nature of their task, which was rather normal compared to other groups, but the ability of their team. It simply did not make sense for the Heavenly Network to purposely form a strong team for no reason. Let's go take a look too tomorrow. There should be a lot of people there if it's an agricultural market. Thus, it's more inconspicuous for us to conduct our investigations separately, someone suggested. Chen Zuan was more at ease after Lu Xu's return and eager to divert the other's attention from his embarrassing branches, yes. Let's go there tomorrow night. Everyone turned to him with an astonished look. Lu Xu laughed, will there be people at night at an agricultural market? Why? You wanna pick leaves for our dinner? Chen Zuan had never been to an agricultural market before. Ashamed, he asked, then what time do you suggest? 
Lu Xu deliberated, noon. Why noon? Because sooner or later something bad will happen, Lu Xu answered confidently. Chan Zuan. Chang Chiu Chiao. His ability to distort meanings was admirable. On the next noon, the team scattered themselves in the market, conducting their own investigations. Four were loitering outside while three were inside for field reconnaissance. Indeed, the market did not appear any different from an ordinary one. But Lu Xu had confirmed against the document that the owner of the seafood wholesale stall in the southwest corner was a member of the black market, a class E. Some market managers were also identified. But there was a problem, some were missing. The material showed that there were 21 in total, but only 16 were spotted in the market. What about the rest? In order to avoid unnecessary attention, field investigators Lu Xu, Chen Zuan and Cheng Chiuqiao bought something inside. Lu Xu took a bag of buns for the group, Chen Zuan had a roasted chicken in his hands, while Cheng Chiuqiao had a stick of coriander. It was said that Cheng Chiuqiao only had 30 plus yuan left in his pocket for the month. Hence, he was on budget. Now, we need to confirm the whereabouts of the remaining five, Lu Xu proposed, otherwise, they may run away. In that case, even if we kill those 16 people in the market, we still fail our mission. Everyone agreed. It was possible that the five might be the prime culprits. If they still remained at large, not only would their task be unsuccessful, it would also become a stain on their records. Lu Xu guarded outside the market until almost midnight, but none of them came out. Confused, he sneaked in, but only to realize that the market was completely empty. Weird. It was the only exit. So where did the sixteen of them go? There was something strange about this market. Maybe they had a hiding place underground. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Last half full or empty And then we just put them on the show